Hey guys! Let's talk about stress and migraine and the link between stress and migraine. Stress is a common trigger for migraines and while the exact mechanisms aren't fully understood, several factors do contribute to the link between stress and migraines. So this video is not going to be a therapy session talking about coping with stress and migraines. This is going to be six scientific hypotheses as to why stress and migraine are so tightly linked. Factor number one that could be contributing to the link between migraine and stress could be those stress hormones themselves. We're talking about cortisol and adrenaline, and maybe there are others, but you know, those are the main two. But the thing with these hormones is they can cause changes to your blood flow and your blood vessel constriction. And both of those things are thought to be involved in migraine attacks. Think about fight or flight response. Why do we have a stress response? So that we can run from a bear, right? So your body needs to use those hormones to create changes in your blood pressure and in your pulse. It's there for a reason. It's a very important thing. The problem is just that it's triggering for migrainey people. This next one is another one that's a big one for me. Muscle tension. Stress increases your muscle tension, which can lead to more migraine attacks. Stress can particularly cause tension in your neck and shoulders, which then pulls on your neck and head, and that can cause headaches in general, those tension style headaches. And those headaches themselves can also cause migraine attacks. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit deeper, a little bit more scientific. So if you're multitasking, come back to me. This is important. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit subscribe. Number three, altered neurotransmitters. Yes, your migraines are actually altering your brain, altering the chemistry of all sorts of stuff in your brain. Next time you have a migraine and someone tells you that, oh my gosh, I get bad headaches too. Just know in your head that you're absolutely right this migraine attack is so much more than just a bad headache. You're not crazy and you're not alone. All of that aside, let me read what the point was supposed to be. And stress can also change the levels of the various neurotransmitters in your brain. That's easy to reason through if you think of things like serotonin. If you're stressed, you have less serotonin. Well, it's been shown in studies that in migraine, things like serotonin, dopamine, and glutamate neurotransmitters are all involved in some way. Like I said at the beginning, it sounds like exact mechanisms aren't fully understood, but we know that these neurotransmitters do play some role, and we know that stress also alters those neurotransmitters. With number four, we get into the snowball effect of all of this. Cortisol, which is that main stress hormone, also plays a role in your immune response. So when you are chronically stressed, you can also have chronic impacts on your immune response and on your inflammation levels. Inflammation is bad for a variety of reasons, but it can also influence the way that your body responds to pain. All of these things can contribute to migraine symptoms and increased pain perception. Migraine is associated with that huge, crazy high head pain headache. And yeah, that does sometimes happen. But this heightened pain perception also happens just on my skin and on other areas of my body. So sometimes I get what I call sunburn skin. If you've ever experienced that, let me know in the comments with a yes or a thumbs up. As if we don't already have enough going on when we're having a migraine attack, now your clothes also have to hurt and your hair also has to sting on your face. You go, why? Why? Let's move on. Number five is triggers and lifestyle factors. I'm going to describe this by talking about periods because I feel like periods really just put this into perspective. I learned from a doctor when I was in high school or college that it's not that periods make you constipated, it's that periods make you crave sugar and that increased sugar intake is making you constipated. So watch what you're doing. I was like, oh, not that I was getting constipated on my period, you know I would share it if I was, but I thought that that was like a very interesting fact. Well, the same thing can happen here with migraine. One huge way that stress can contribute to your migraine attacks is by changing up your routine. If you haven't already seen my video on lifestyle stuff, nailing the basics, 
I'll stick a card here so you can watch that. But when you're getting a migraine attack, especially if you're getting migraine attacks very often, you're gonna notice differences in things like your sleep patterns and the things that you eat. You're gonna have totally different changes in routine. Your moods are gonna be different. You're probably gonna be processing a lot of grief emotions and things like that. And any one of those things on its own could definitely trigger a migraine attack. So ironically, our response to our migraine attacks could be causing the next migraine attack. Same thing with medication overuse headaches. If you take too many of the painkiller medications, then they end up giving you headaches. It's like you just can't win. It's almost an everything in moderation thing, but it's actually a you really need to stick on your routines thing. That's really what it comes down to. You've got to find what works and stick to it. And I'm working on a ton of material in the background right now on routine stuff that has helped me. The exact things that I need to nail every single day so that I can feel like this instead of feeling like migraine jet. But going back to just stress and how stress can contribute to migraine, well, if you're feeling really stressed so you can't sleep, then that might trigger that migraine attack. Or you're feeling really stressed so you have some alcohol. Or you're feeling really stressed so you skip a meal. That could be the thing that pushes you over your migraine threshold. Very last one. Wow, this one flew by. Number six, emotional factors. I alluded to this in the previous one, but stress can be emotionally draining. It can lead to anger, frustration, depression. Those things can lead to your migraine attacks. Emotional changes are super tightly tied to migraine attacks, both for cause and for effect. Many individuals experience mood changes before, during, and after an attack. One thing that's interesting about me and my migraines relationship between stress and migraine is that I actually don't get migraine when I'm super stressed. It's like my body decides to focus and hold it down. It's right after the stressful thing ends that I run my migraine cycle. So I didn't have a migraine the day of my big exam. I had a migraine right when that exam ended. I got home and I just crash. There's an emotional response. There's an emotional component. Even if you're not really feeling emotional. And of course it's important to realize that not all migraines are triggered by stress. It can be triggered by a bunch of different things. In addition, the relationship between stress and migraine can vary from person to person, just like everything else. Some individuals may be super sensitive to stress as a trigger, and it, it may be something that they really, really need to focus on in order to manage their migraines. But for other individuals, it may not play that big of a role. Other individuals may not respond that much to stress, or they may have other triggers or a combination of triggers. But no matter who you are, and honestly, whether you're migraine or not, managing your stress levels is going to be great for your health. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye, but I have another video recommendation if you found this one helpful. First off though, hit subscribe, push like please, and then let me tell you about that video. What was it called? It was, um, oh, managing migraine triggers with toddlers. That will be the card when the song comes back on. I highly recommend that if you like this video, just because it goes over a lot of those lifestyle factor things that I've done to try to manage my migraines with the toddlers around. It is geared toward moms and people with babies who can't really use standard advice that you'll find online, but I think it's useful for people even if they don't have toddlers at home. So check out that video in the card that is coming up right now. Do 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 do